relationship with food. It was my comfort. Anytime I felt any sort of strong emotion, I would go to food. So therefore, you lead to 360 pounds. Well, I finally changed my mind when my son was probably three or four months old. I looked him squarely in the eye and he, as he was lying in his crib, and I said, Daddy's going to get healthy for you. And for about six months, I lied to my son. I just began thinking, what if that had been my legacy, a broken promise? I was watching the 21-day fix. I told my wife, I have got to get this. So I started eating healthier, and the weight just started dropping. After my first round, I had lost 12 pounds, so I knew that I needed to keep going. And then the 21 Day Fix Extreme came out, and I had to have that, and that went fairly well. At that point, I ordered Insanity Max 30. I felt like I was prepared for that challenge, and then I began P90X3. Thus far, I have been pleased with the results. In the Beach Body Challenge, I have lost just under 165 pounds. coach so that whole comprehensive package is I think what sets Beach Body apart. You don't have to be an athletic person, you don't have to be elite. I'm just a guy who refused to quit, refused to give up, persevered and found the results that I was looking for. that you have never heard of, I guarantee. About, let's say, 600 people. We have no traffic lights, just one blinking red light in town that tells you to stop at this particular intersection. Uh, I actually lived in a much larger town of 7,000 for a brief while when I started the Beachbody uh, Challenge, but you know, I decided to move back. So my story is not really a clean, linear story that I'm gonna tell you, so that maybe will hopefully give you some hope for your own self. If you find yourself stopping and starting, stopping and starting, that's my story. I've stopped and started, I couldn't tell you how many times, but here I am today, but I've finally achieved those results that I thought about all those years. Um, you know, so no matter where you are, you, know, you can find yourself at whatever goal. So that's a, the first thing I wanna tell you is make sure that you set very strong goals for yourself. If you have not done that, then sit down and write down those goals and try to stay, keep your goals ahead of where you are, because I'll talk about that a little more later. But just a little bit about my own story. Uh, weight was always something that was a bit of a struggle for me through my adolescent years. The doctors would kind of admonish me a little bit about my weight. Uh, when I graduated high school, I was at about 245 pounds, and by the end of my freshman year of college, after just a few short months, I was at 275 pounds. So that freshman 15 they talk about, I put that on twice, I liked it so much. Uh, a lot of my days would consist of, you know, I'd have a, a burger from Burger King on campus, and I would lay down, take a nap, and I would get up and eat pizza. And needless to say, you know, that, that could contribute to a pretty heavy amount of weight gain. And I didn't actually do what most college students do is, you know, go out and meet people. I just kind of kept to myself uh, a lot of insecurities about weight. And as the years went on, I gained 10 to 12 pounds a year every year till I found myself at 360 pounds, my all-time high, in April of 2013. I knew that in August of 2013, we were expecting our son. So I realized at that point I really needed to try to get myself into a better state of health. So I did work pretty hard there for a while. In about four months' time, I lost maybe 40 pretty quickly. But then, you know, when I was in the hospital with, after my son was born, I decided, well, I'm gonna take a little break here. I, I think I can, I can just jump right back in. So I had people bring me the worst foods, cheeseburgers, pizzas, fried chicken, all the, the, uh, food, the food groups where I come from. Um, and they, they brought that to me and then I just kind of fell back into those habits. So I began to slowly regain the weight that I had lost. Um, and the promise 
that's alluded to in the video, that promise I made to my son. He was about three or four months old. I was trying to wreck my brain thinking about what is it going to take for me to finally wake up and realize what I'm doing to myself and by extension to my beautiful son that I claim to love more than anything, who, by the way, when I asked him if he was going to miss me when I came up here, he said, I want to miss you with you. So he wanted to come with me, and uh, it was very sad. Luckily, he was asleep when we went to the airport, but you know, it, it was uh, kind of difficult to leave him in that respect. But I looked at him in his crib, and I said, that is going to get healthy for you. But, you know, for about six months every day after that, I did not do anything to fulfill that promise. I thought in my, in my mind at that time that maybe, maybe that will be something that will wake me up. But for some reason, it just did not click yet. It did not register yet in my mind. So as I went along, I was slowly regaining the weight that I put on. It was coming back on slowly, slowly but surely. And, you know, I began to get into this pattern of just self-loathing. So I absolutely hated the fact that I knew every day I was breaking a promise. And, you know, I've, I've often talked to people about just how important your word is, how important your promises are, but I was not living that myself. So I began to kind of hate myself at, on one level for that. The fact that I was doing this to myself, to my son. I, I realized that I was on a track there that I was going to have that sad little boy that had to either sit in the corner with daddy who was too out of shape and overweight to play with the other children, or he would have to get up and play with some other kid's dad, if, if that was the case. And I did not want that. So what was it that maybe made me flip a switch? Well, one day I was in a complete state of fatigue, disgust with myself. I didn't really want to be around too many people at that time. And I was going to pick up dinner for my wife and myself. My wife wasn't feeling particularly well, so I went after dinner, and it was obviously not a very healthy one. And I got that in the car, and I was going through an intersection that I have driven through thousands of times, literally, in my lifetime, because I lived about a mile and a half from there. And when I was going through the intersection, I, for whatever reason, I did not look up. The light was red. And that's a very busy intersection. That may be a small town, but that, uh, you know, out of the 7,000 people, about half of them seemed to camp out right around that intersection. And as I went through that red light, another car was coming the other way. So I was T-boned at that point. And I didn't realize it till later, but I had this mark on my head. My head had hit the door jam. And luckily, we were, neither of us were going at a very high rate of speed. I think he was fiddling with his phone at the time, not paying much attention, as 90% uh, of drivers seem to do these days. Um, but he was not going that fast, and he hit me on the side, and, you know, I just, it was kind of a, a wake-up call, because when I had to make that call of shame to my wife and have her come pick me up, she obviously had to bring our son with her. He was 10 months old at the time. And I just remember when I saw him, just something in my mind flipped at that moment. I realized what I had been doing and I realized what I had to do. Just something changed and I'll tell you what changed and what has what was lacking in my previous journeys is I didn't have a why. And I think that's why a lot of people's journeys fall flat is because they don't have a why. I realized at that moment in time that my son was not going to be the one that was going to sit there all sad-eyed because daddy can't get up and play with him. That was, not, that, that was not going to happen to my son. He was not going to have to make the memories with some other person. That was my right as his father to do that. So I decided right then and there that I was going to change. So that's what you have to do when you find that why. You have to have that why. You have to be able to articulate that why. Now, maybe an illustration for you. Think about the person that you care most about in this world. If you're a parent, think about your children. If you're not a parent, think about the person you could uh, you know, see life without the least. Imagine that this stage, here's a cliff. They're falling over the cliff. You reach out and you grab them as they're falling. What's the absolute one thing you're not going to do is let go. You won't let go of them. You don't stop and think about, can I hold them long enough for them to get back up? Will I have the strength to pull them back up? How long is it gonna be? Till someone can get here to help me. You don't think about any of that. You're just going to hold them as long as it takes. That's what you've got to do to that why. You've got to hold on to that why as tightly as you can for however long it takes. So whatever your why is, if you're doing this for your children, you're doing this for whatever your reason might be, you pick that for yourself 
and you go after that. Because unfortunately, a lot of people say, my why is I want to lose weight and get healthy. Well, what's going to happen when you plateau? Not if, but when you plateau. Or what happens when you can't necessarily measure healthy? What does healthy look like? So that's the problem with that. Those are goals, but that's not necessarily a why. So you need to find that why and stick to that why. So at that point, I ordered, I began, well first, I began eating, uh, I saw in the rock and body literature, which was when I was 360 pounds, the one program that I could kind of keep up with halfway, and I saw the Michi's Ladder dietary guidelines, and that really was one of the biggest things that's changed my life, was just looking at those guidelines, realizing that, you know, if you're familiar with Michi's Ladder, it has tiers one through five of your foods, with five being the worst possible foods, and and you can guess where the tier was that most of my favorite foods wound up. Because the word fried in front of anything automatically drops it to five. So if you like fried whatever, it's a five. But when I began eating the tiers one, two, and three, I just began feeling much better. It only took about six weeks to notice a difference in my cholesterol, in my blood pressure, in my blood sugar. And now, you know, I, I used to have concerns with all those. I was hyper, I had hyperlipidemia, hyperglycemia and hypertension. All of those things going on. I, was, I had uh, been on blood pressure medication. My uh, doctor uh, told me I was one bad blood test away from being diabetic. But you know, now my results are magnificent because of the better eating and the exercise that Beachbody has allowed me to find. So you know, I highly recommend that if you're struggling with somewhere to start and that's where I usually tell people to start, is look at the Michi's Ladder Guidelines and get your diet in order. And then I began the 21 day fix, and that's when the, the majority of my transformation happened. Most of what you see in the transformation photos was 21 day fix results. Uh, I remember that first workout distinctly. It was very, very eye-opening as to what task was ahead of me. And I also remember the first time I went downstairs and tried to sit on the toilet after that first workout. It was agony. I began to, you know, maybe think, do I need to go that badly right now? But, but once you get past that, it becomes so much better. It doesn't get easier, as Autumn says, you just get better and you get more accustomed to it. So, you know, don't worry so much about that, and don't think you have to keep up with the people on the video. If you buy an exercise video and you can easily keep up with them, it's time to get another exercise video. It'd be like kind of going to a uh, martial arts class and being upset because you can't best the instructor. I mean, it's kind of uh, an analogy there, because these people are professionals. The people that they pick, they don't just randomly ask some guy, hey, you want to be in this video? These are some very carefully chosen individuals. So now don't feel like you have to keep up with what's going on in the video. And you know, so once I got past that and realized there's no shame in modifying, then you know, I, I began to get much better results. And there's still no shame in modifying. I've been at it for a couple of years now and I still have to modify a lot of moves because I'm one of the most unathletic human beings <laughs> on planet Earth. Because if you saw I apologize that they showed me running in this video. I didn't know they were going to include that. I don't even know why I said it. But I looked at that and thought, that is the most awkward looking running I've ever seen in my life. But, you know, it, it's just, it's not always about how pretty it looks, but it's about just getting it done. It's about, you know, what can you do? How, how much work are you willing to put in? I think that is what did it for me. It was not necessarily skill so much as just perseverance. I was willing to hang in there through the times, through the plateaus. I was telling some of the people in the question session earlier that I got to the point that I lost 92 pounds and I would get on there day after day after day, 92 pounds lost, 92 pounds, 92. For it was a couple of solid weeks or more that that 93rd pound just, I was thinking, what, what am I gonna have to do? But once it happened, I just felt this sudden surge of victory. Felt this, uh, this sudden feeling of accomplishment. And I realized that, you know, I, I've learned from this. So that's one thing too, when you make mistakes, just learn from them, move on. Those plateaus, learn from them. 
Don't look at things as failures, just look at them as lessons. What did I learn from this? What can I take from this to help me moving forward? Because it's not necessarily something, your journey doesn't end. It's not even a marathon, it's just an ongoing, continual race. Now, I still struggle to this day. I've struggled with several things. Um, some of the things that are killers to this journey, which doubt slash fear being one of them. You know, hindsight being another. If you spend all your time looking backward, you're not going to go know where you're going forward. And the latest one that's really uh, been a struggle for me is complacency. Because what happens when you've set these goals and you've not only met them, but you have far exceeded them? Because believe me, winning $100,000 was not even remotely on my radar when I began this journey. I just wanted to lose some weight. I thought I'd be happy if I could get to maybe 275, 250, if I'm lucky, I said. But, you know, I realized later that luck doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. But, you know, and I thought maybe if I'm lucky, I could wear 2X shirts again. I, I set some very modest goals to start. But, you know, now that I far exceeded those, I realized recently, far more recently than I care to think about even, that I don't know where I'm going. So I've had to sit down and reevaluate where I am and make new goals for myself and realize that, you know, just because I've come this far doesn't mean that I could coast at this point. I'd kind of let my guard down a little bit and, and I didn't really realize just how much that the struggles that I had at 360 pounds, I still have. They haven't gone away. I'm still a food addict. I still seek those things. I can't have a candy bar. If I have one, that's one too many, and the whole box is not enough. That's just how it is for me. I haven't had a soda, and it'll be six years in December, because I know that if I have one, if you, I know that if I have one, then it's, you know, the floodgates are going to open. That once I open that first bottle and, and take a drink, then that's it. So I can't have any of that. I realize that about myself. That's something we have to be true with ourselves. Be honest enough with ourselves to realize that, you know, this is me. I have to take ownership of that. So take ownership of your struggles. And not necessarily embrace your struggles, but learn what they are and learn what lessons you can take from them. So as I move forward, I just have to keep my eyes on new goals. I have to continuously set new goals for myself. So, the, so some thoughts I want to leave you with today is one big thing that I've learned through this journey that I really want everyone to understand, and I hope that everyone beyond us can begin to understand this, is the, one of the keys to this is do not chase happiness. Choose happiness. <laughs> one very toxic phrase that I used to use all the time was, I'll be happy when, whatever it was. I thought at one point I'd said, I'll be happy when I reach 180 pounds. And I've never been so miserable as when I was trying to reach 180 pounds. I got down to the 196 mark, and then it just started kind of climbing back up very slightly. Uh, you know, now I kind of put on some muscle mass, so I don't worry so much about the weight, what scale, what number's on the scale. I haven't been on the scale in weeks. I, it's not necessarily a concern of mine anymore. But when I was wrapped up in that, when I pinned my happiness to that, I just felt, began to feel pretty miserable. And this was, you know, about, this was in, after I had uh, gotten to the point that I'd won the quarterly challenge and was in consideration for the finals. So it's not been that long ago. And, you know, so just don't chase after happiness because it just keeps moving. You would never catch it. You have to choose happiness from wherever you are. There was a video that I saw that really hit this home for me as uh, I wish I could have found it to, to show it was on someone's Instagram account. It was a live, a size live workout. And there was one young lady in there that stood out in particular for me because she was doing the workout in a wheelchair. I mean, she was rocking that workout. I mean, flat out. Uh, she was just, she was having the time of her life, obviously. But, you know, she chose to be happy in that situation. She could have said, you know, I'll be happy when I can get out of this chair. Or instead, she chose to be happy. So wherever we are, 
Choose to be happy. Now, don't focus on what you can't do. Look at what can you do. Now, so everything we can do, getting up each morning and being able to do any kind of workout is a tremendous blessing. So never lose sight of that. And you know, we have unprecedented access now to these great Beachbody programs. You know, people just a few short years ago would not have had anywhere near the access that we do when we can get into these programs, but they don't have anywhere near that access. You know, someone in the backwoods of East Central Kentucky can punch up an, a, a, the same workout that someone here in a large city like Philadelphia can. You know, that's amazing. We can connect with each other. We did a, a FaceTime call earlier this week with coaches from up here, and, and I was on there, Carmen was on there, different people from all over were on there. That's amazing. And just look at, think of the blessing that that is. And embrace that and realize that we're at the greatest time for health and fitness that we're ever going to find right now. Now, I, I can only imagine what Beachbody might have in store for us in the future. But, you know, just believe in these programs. Believe in the system. Because you may not see results right away. People, people's bodies react differently. You know, just because you don't find the great results right away doesn't mean you won't find them. You know, I had to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. It's been a three-year-plus odyssey now that continues to evolve for me so do not give up that's the very worst thing that you can do is give up on yourself so always love yourself wherever you are whatever point you are in the journey because if you think you stop or you start having these self-loathing feelings you know stop that because just think you may be someone's goal where you are now may be someone else's goal where they want to be so don't lose sight of that. So love yourself. <laughs> Believe in yourself. Because everyone here can accomplish great things. You may say, well, I'm not athletic. Neither am I at all. And I do not exaggerate. I'm going to be in here working out with you all later. You're going to see. Yeah, he was right. <laughs> but believe in yourself, that it's all about how persistent can you be. Because, you know, with the tortoise and the hare book, the tortoise wins because he did not quit. He wouldn't give up. So don't give up and you'll get these results. So now, you know, I feel like I can hold my head high and think when I look at my son now and realize when I see that light that's in his eyes, when I'm able to get up and play with him, I'm not going to let anything extinguish that. Nothing is going to stand in the way again of that light that's in his eyes. When I hold him and embrace him and he tells me that he loves me, that's what it's all about. Friends, that has made everything worthwhile for me. And when I look at you know, my workout area and our new home we built, we actually built a room that's the workout room, so I'm able to have my own space for that now, which is a just such a blessing. I look at those mats, the television I use, the workout programs, and I just have to give Beachbody a silent thank you for that each time, was realize the life that they have made possible for my family and me. Um, you know, just the future that it's made for us. Because now I can be there at my son's milestones. I was setting myself up to live a life to where I would be absent, either because I was too unhealthy to be there or because I was dead. But now I could be there for hopefully most of his milestones. And you know that not only that, that, but I was also leading him, going to lead him down a path where he would learn my bad habits and repeat those. Because he's at the point now he repeats everything he hears from us. And he would have repeated my habits, my bad habits, my bad health, and he would have passed that along to his children as well. So just remember, if nothing else, love yourself, believe in yourself, Find your why and hold on to that. God bless you all. It's been a privilege and an honor to be here.